The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Bend, Oregon, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 36173. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start at the front bumper. On the face of the front bumper, passenger and driver side, you'll find dual air horns. Moving just inside that location, you'll find your PA speaker and electronic siren. Moving toward the center, you'll find your wench. Moving over to the driver's side, you'll find the mechanical siren. As we move up onto the bumper extension top side, you'll find on the passenger side your bell. And then just inside of that location, you'll find two attachment points. These have 6,000 pound direct pull. As we move to the center, you'll find the access door for accessing the winch location. As we move up onto the cab itself on the outer edge, you'll find a turn indicator marker light. Just inside of that location, you'll find the headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. Moving up from that location, you'll find the rotor beam, emergency warning lights forward facing. And as we move just inside that location, directly behind the Pierce logo is where you'll find the latch to release the hood. Moving up to the outer edges, you'll find a mirror housing a flat and then a convex mirror. Just inside of that location, you'll find the windshield housing three windshield wipers across the seamless one-piece windshield. Let's move up to the brow where you'll find your clearance lights and then also you'll find forward-facing floodlights. Moving up onto the top of the vehicle, you'll find on each side emergency warning lights. Moving just over to the driver's area, you'll find your forward-facing Opticom. And as we move up onto the ladder of the tip is where you'll find additional directional floodlights. Let's take a look at some close-ups that we just talked about. First, starting with the front bumper area, side-facing emergency warning lights. As we move to the grill area, directly behind the Pierce logo is where you'll find the release mechanism to gain access into the hood area. As we look to the winch, you'll find free spool control on the right side and then also your plug-in for your remote. Let's go ahead and take a general view here of the side of the vehicle on the driver's side. And let's start first with the cab section, identify a few items there. Starting first with the front bumper area where you'll find that side facing emergency warning light. To the A pillar of the cab area is where you'll find the plug-in location for your shoreline inlet. And then moving up to the grab handles, you'll find easily accessible door handles. They are keyed with a glove that can be accessed. Right next to those, you'll find grab handles for gaining access in and out of the cab. And then emergency warning lights, upper and lower zone. And as we move all the way to the very front section over the driver's seat, you'll find a side-facing floodlight. Let's take a close up of that front bumper side light and also shoreline inlet. This is a 30 amp plug. General view here of the body of the vehicle. First you'll find in the front section your folding wheel chocks in the lower area. Just in front of and also in rear of the rear tire is where you'll find your stabilizer pad. And as we move up onto the body you'll find your lower zone emergency warning lights. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus. Identify a few items. First turn marker indicator lights. As you move up from that location, you'll find your tail, brake, turn, and emergency warning light cluster. Up from that location, you'll find at the very top section, emergency warning lights. As you move just inside of that location, directly in the center is where you'll find your backup camera. There are also two work lights located in the rear of the vehicle. And then also your traffic advisor down in the lower section, just underneath the backup camera. Let's move around and take a look at the passenger side. Same configuration with lights and equipment location. As we move to the cab area, same configuration on this area also. Let's go ahead and move now to the uh, driver's area. We'll start first, fold down steps when the door is accessed and opened. We'll start with the door panel. We'll affix to the door panel all of our safety and placard warning information. Door lock and latch located in the same vicinity. And then as we move up from that location, you'll find electric window controls and a grab handle. 
Let's go ahead and move to the base of the driver's seat where you'll find your air inlet chuck and then also an indicator when plugged into shoreline power, your battery voltage will be indicated here in the bar graph. Let's move to the yellow placard located around the right ankle of the operator. This is manufactured by Pierce for your department and has the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, and all of the fluid capacities for each component, fluid capacity and fluid type. As we move to the floor, you'll find air horn and mechanical siren foot pedals. About the left knee of the operators where you'll find this diagnostic information for engine transmission ABS diagnostic port, also the tech module plug-in location, and also display module. As we move down, we do have some additional switches. First, this is the ABS diagnostic switch, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and then regen inhibit switch. Let's move up to the dash cluster. We'll start on the left-hand side with the hazard lights, start switch, and ignition switch. Just down from that, you'll find a switch labeled EM, which stands for emergency master. It engages and disengages all emergency lights, headlights, and panel switch. To the right, OK to engage the high idle switch and indicator. Moving up to the dash itself, transmission oil, def level, and water temp. Moving to the opposite side, you'll find volts, fuel, front and rear air. Located in the center, you'll find your speedometer and tachometer. Diagnostic information displays above and below the speedometer. As we move just to the right of the operator's seat, you'll find the yellow diamond, which is your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. Just to the right, you'll find your Pierce command zone. Tremendous amount of information. Seek your owner's manual for more information. It is a touch screen with also action buttons. Allison transmission pad with a digital readout, some additional switching panels, and here's a close-up of that. Let's move just to the right to the switching panel. We'll start at the very top section with your aerial master, aerial PTO, stabilizers, locator lights, generator PTO, tire chains, diff lock, backup override, and load manager. Moving further down, engine brake on and off switch. That's a setting switch for low, medium, and high on the engine brake fan clutch, off-road traction, and mirror heat. Moving just to the right of this location, you'll find your generator operating instructions. Moving just on the very top section, you'll find climate control, heat, air conditioning, and defrost, and then also mirror control for the flat and convex mirror, both the passenger and driver side. Additional storage location directly behind and to the right of the driver's seat between the officer seat. Let's move behind the driver's seat where you'll find your audible speaker. This is for your backup camera system. There is volume control located on the face of that speaker. Also, when plugged into shoreline power, your battery charger will activate. We do have an additional outlet located here. This is only operational when plugged into shoreline power. And then also down at the very bottom section, you'll find your manual jack handle. Let's go ahead and move out overhead of the operator seat. First starting with this yellow placard on the left side. Height of the vehicle, 11 feet 9. Length, 42 feet 2 inches. Gross vehicle weight rating, 70,800 pounds. We've got a switch panel located here also. Emergency master, roof light, front warning and side warning. Lower rear warning, upper rear warning, opticom, and a siren brake for your mechanical siren. When any of those switches have been depressed, they will illuminate green around the outer edge. Let's move just to the right to an additional switch panel where you'll find your scene lights, front scene, driver side, passenger side, and rear scene. You'll also find alley driver lights, officer alley, emergency light dimmer, and then also your perimeter lights. Let's continue on the same path. Let's move slightly to the right within reach of the driver. You'll find your traffic advisor on and off switch, left, right, split, and flash, and also direction indicator. Your siren control and also PA speaker system. Moving further to the right, if you have a compartment or door open, you'll find this light flashing indicating you have an open do not move your apparatus. You'll also find seat belt information, red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted, green indicating they're in the seat and belted. Let's take a look through the cab area first on the exterior. We'll start with an exterior door gaining access in, this is right next to the driver's seat. As we move down, Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheels, and also a sight gauge located for your front axle. As we move to the cab area, once again, affixed to the door panel, we're gonna find all of our safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, window control, and a grab handle. 
As we move inside this area, you'll find additional compartment space. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the cab area now. In the very center section, you'll find additional resource storage location. Just beneath this area is your drop down for your oil and also transmission daily checks. As we move to the rear wall of the apparatus, you'll find SCBA bottled seats. And as we move just underneath that center pedestal, you'll find additional storage location and also 12 volt access. As we move to the exterior, this is directly behind the cab wall area, you'll find additional exterior storage. As we move inside the body section, you'll find your breaker box panel and also generated power panel. The next set of images uh, we'll move through. Um, this happens to be your generator on and off switch. It's a remote start switch location. But the next set of images we're going to display the uh, tilting and action of some of the storage compartments. Release mechanisms are located on both sides of the shelves. Tool mounting system. As we move to the very bottom section of this compartment, we're going to find a shoreline outlet. This is a 20 amp plug. Also, when plugged in shore power, that green light will indicate and then also you'll have uh, indicating power on and then just to the right you'll have battery direct 12 volt DC. Let's move to the exterior where you'll find a electrical reel located on the passenger and driver side. We do have some warning placards indicating crush hazard because of the mechanical action of this device. There is the possibility of a crush hazard. As we move inside you do have a push button for your electrical reel and then just underneath that, once again, 12 volt DC action. Moving now to the cord reel rind, you can see this is a 20 amp, 150 foot. And then that 12 volt DC direct battery. Let's go ahead and move to the exterior locations where we'd like to point out this is the fill location for your 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. It is the blue cap. We also have some warning placard information, electrocution hazard, the equipment is not insulated. And then also some warning placard information on your diesel exhaust. Once again, 4.5 US gallon DEF tank, it is the blue cap. Additional storage location for air bottles. There are retaining straps in the lower section, tilt out shelf in the upper section, and then additional storage shelves in the uppermost portion. As we move to the center section, you'll find SCBA bottle storage location here with retaining straps. Once again, Goodyear tires and Alcoa wheels. As we move to the rear of the axle is where you'll find the silver cap. This is your ultra low sulfur diesel fill location. As we move inside the rear compartment, you'll find in the lower section of the shelf, 12 volt outlet. Once again, power on indicator. As we move to the bottom, you'll find a direct pull 6,000 pound allowable winch rating. This is the receiver hitch. And then just underneath that, you'll find 12 volt electrical power for that winch. Once again, crush hazard, this is the additional stabilizer area. We have a warning placard there just above that emergency warning light. All of your compartments in the open position. Let's go ahead and move around now to the rear of the apparatus, ladder storage location. First, let's start in the uppermost compartment here. We have an additional storage compartment in the upper left. As we move further down from this location, you're gonna find deck lights, driver's side scene lights, and passenger side scene light switches. Also, you'll find at the very rear section a pressure gauge. This is for your aerial inlet. Just to the right, you'll find an inclinometer. This is from left to right. We do have a green, yellow, and red section indicating for operation. And then also pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Once again, the aerial inlet. Moving just to the right, we have a warning placard for the anchor. And then also just beneath that, passenger side anchors uh, attached to the frame rail in the very rear section. Ladder storage, vertical storage. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. On the left and right side, you'll find the placards indicating the type and length of ladders that you have. Same thing on the opposite side, type and length of ladders. 
quick shot just underneath this Pandora gains access for the drain for your aerial device. As we move to the aerial emergency power switch and stabilizer emergency power switch, moving down from that location is the diverter for aerial or stabilizers. Then also you'll find each individually controlled lever. As we move to the very bottom section of the door area, this is where you'll find the instructions on what those individual valves are indicating for their use. Moving to the upper right hand corner, additional storage location. As we move down from this location, you're going to find a danger placard once again regarding electrocution hazard. The equipment is not insulated. Moving further down, this is going to be your aerial device control center. We have an emergency stop, override, stabilizer power, and diagnostics for your UBS interface. This does have a remote. Remember there are left side and right side controls, front and back, and then also green indicators indicating that you're safe for operation. As we now move around to the passenger side, all compartments are in the open position. We'll take a look in those. Same configuration as we have on the driver's side, 6,000 pound maximum allowable wrench rating. Just underneath that is the electrical outlet and then also additional storage and bottle storage locations. As we move through the vehicle, you'll find some additional warning placards indicating um, one danger and also warning. This placard is indicating a danger placard regarding that your ladder is not insulated and that's why we have this placard indicating on the side here. I'd also like to point out an additional warning placard regarding extremely hot diesel exhaust. Temperatures do exist, that's why we have this warning placard. Be cautious where you park your vehicle, those exhaust temperatures are hot. As we move forward of that location, you'll find additional tool storage and also pike pole storage in the upper compartment. Electrical cord reel, 150 foot, 20 amp. This is the rewind button for that. Then also again, direct battery, 12 volt DC. Once again, on the outrigger location, we do have an additional crush injury warning placard. Then as we move into the very back wall and side wall of that vehicle, you'll also find uh, individual compartments have battery direct 12 volt DC access in addition with a shoreline and also a power indicator. We're now to the cab area of the vehicle. This is the compartment just to the rear section of the cab wall. Let's go ahead and move inside the cab. We're now on the passenger side rear, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, window control, and a grab handle. As we move inside, you'll find push on and off white or red lenses, also speakers and climate control in the ceiling area. There are three seats located against the rear wall. They all have the ability to house SCBAs. As we move around between the officer seat and the rear, it's where you'll find additional storage location. As we move inside to the officer space, affixed to the door panel, you'll find safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, and also window control and a grab handle. This vehicle is equipped with frontal impact protection, supplemental restraint system, please do not mount anything within this area, and also warning placard. To the right, you'll find your bell rope activation. And as we move just to the left floorboard area, you'll find your mechanical siren foot pedal. Looking overhead, you have push on and off red and white lens also's, uh, also controlled. And then also we have some switch panels on this side, front scene, driver's side scene, passenger side scene, and rear scene. Also in the lower section, driver alley, officer alley, siren brake, which is to control your EQ2B uh, mechanical siren, and then also perimeter lighting. Moving just to the left, you'll find uh, your Panasonic Weather AM FM Sirius XM radio. Also, you'll find your Firecom system located for the wireless base area on the top of the ceiling area. As we move to the left-hand side, you'll find additional storage location. And as we move to the console area, you'll find your Firecom squelch and volume control for the system. You also have additional 12-volt access via barrel style and then also USB and USB-C. 
directly behind the seat, you'll also find Shoreline Outlet, 12 volt DC, direct battery. And now as we go through a set of images now, we're gonna see all the compartments open, also from a perspective just underneath the vehicle. This is the front section area. These are the tow locations for your vehicle towing. Let's move around to the driver's side cab rear area where you'll find the hydraulic reservoir and also manual location for cab tilt. As we move underneath to the rear axle, to the rear of the axle is where you'll find those locations, receiver hitch and also electrical power for your winch. And as we move to the very rear section, this is your backup alarm. I'm just gonna move right around the very bottom section of the apparatus. There is also perimeter lighting located at all points of compartments and also locations for personnel's movement in or out of the cab. Exhaust and also tire chains located in the very front section of the axle. We're now looking to the transmission and exhaust. And now we're to the very front section of the apparatus. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at some of the aerial devices. Let's move first to the pedestal area. As we move to the pedestal at the very top section, left area is where you'll find your control model for your pedestal. On that, you'll find this speaker. This is for your audible alarm. Then also some warning and danger placards also located throughout this area. Fall restraint required and also pinch and crush hazards. As we move to the pedestal itself, we unveil the cover. We're gonna find emergency stop. It is a push button. Also, we're gonna find aerial speed and then also light control. At the very top section, you're gonna find your Pierce command zone. Once again, tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips. Please take a look at your owner's manual. We do have nozzle control, and then to the right we have ladder control for extend, retract, right and left, and lower and raise. On the cover itself, you'll find additional NFPA information, also warning and danger information placards. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of those items. As we move to the front section, this is your intercom system, volume control, listen and talk. And then here's some close-ups of those items we just talked about with the emergency stop, aerial speeds, emergency hydraulic overrides. Nozzle control and also ladder control. We also have a deploy and stow switch. As we move back to that ascendant ladder information, as we look at the placard itself, it's broken down into various different areas. First, the specifications for 1911, also specifications for a 50 mile an hour wind condition, waterway dry, and waterway charge, same thing, 50 mile an hour wind conditions. We do have nozzle position and reaction. At the very bottom section, there are some asterisks. Please take a note of those regarding freezing temperatures for weight capacities. As we move to the right, you'll find on the outer edge of the base section, you'll find a 12 foot roof ladder. Also located here in the fly section, you'll find a rubbish hook. As we move to the uh, front section of the ladder, you'll find additional warning information placard regarding crush injury or ladder movement, and then also the ability to move the nozzle position from the tip uh, to a lower section on the fly section. You'll also find uh, stream controls, fog left and right, up and down. And as we move to the outer edge of the ladder on the driver's side is where you'll find your aerial lights and tracking lights. As we move to the front, this is passive. This is your intercom system speaker. As we move to the front section, you'll find your master stream nozzle and also electronic controls and also LED lights. As we move to the top section of the aerial, the aerial is currently up right now. You'll find an additional ladder and then in between the area and the dunnage area, you're gonna find the hydraulic reservoir and then also your hydraulic generator. As we move to the cab section, these are indications that the cab area is slippery and not a walking surface, and that's why we have these slip hazard information warning placards. Let's take a look at some additional photos, aerial in the upright position on the passenger side, and then we'll take a look from the driver's side. And now we'll go with the cab in the upright position. As we move around, you'll find battery terminals. These are your jumper cables. The next set of images are just gonna be close-ups of the items regarding the engine and chassis area. This is your TAC-4 suspension located on the left. Cummings X-15 engine.
Let's go ahead and take a look at the cab tilt and then specifically into the hood area. Remember to gain access to the hood directly behind the Pierce logo is the latch mechanism. This gains you access to the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid that's on the passenger side. As we move around to the driver's side, you'll find the fill location for your coolant. Also instructions here for raise and lower the cab on a placard on the wall. In addition, we have a red covered protected switch here. This is for raise and lower. Uh, the cable here coming out is going to be the remote activation for lift or lower. And then to the right, you'll find your power steering fluid. Um, there is a uh, dipstick located on that. Quick video here of your vehicle. Emergency lights activated. Congratulations, Ben Fire and EMS Oregon on your new aerial device, job number 36173. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.